We are three city dwellers. We have always lived in houses with amenities close by, and although we are not strangers to alternative living, we have never lived extensively as if we were one with nature. Yet this way of life and thinking about the world intrigued us. We had heard through some friends about a village in southwest Wales who live their lives honestly, according to the belief that we are one with nature and should take care of the planet. We decided to get in touch with the archivist, Rick, and he cordially invited us to Teepee Valley. When we got there, we were welcomed to his hut with green tea and a surprisingly warm and cosy place to sit and have a chat. Uh, my name is, is Rick Mays. I'm an old age pensioner. I came to Teepee Valley in 1979. Teepee Valley s started as a, a, a result of the strong desire that young people who had been inspired by the flower power movement, the hippie movement, their desire not just to be urban hippies, but there was something more to just going around in pretty clothes and thinking that you were wonderful. There was a bit more, a bit more to being, to the ideology than that. It involved somehow being at one with nature because that was obviously had to be a part of the, the hippie philosophy being one with nature and being a one with nature in a town uh, just brings up so many conflicts and dilemmas it just it wasn't real there's something not real about living in a concrete world where you walk from the, on tarmac then concrete then tarmac then and you know just unreal it's just not right and so we had to find ways of, of somehow getting back to living in the countryside again, which isn't easy. The first land that was bought here was bought just a couple of acres, and that was just the seed of it. Somebody did in 1974, managed to buy a couple of acres from an eccentric old farmer called Mr. Blunt. Living in this community here, we've never actually been isolationist. We've all always lived as a, as a part of uh, the rest of society but just a part that is, is consciously trying to live according to some different principles. And this community here is, is actually unique in Britain because of the way it, it grew organically through uh, anarchistically minded people uh, successfully living together. Because at the time, the hippie movement on the continent was marginal compared to the UK. Uh, what went on in the USA, none of us really knew about, except what we had seen on television at the birth of the flower power area when we saw these long-haired, prettily dressed young people rushing around throwing flowers, which all inspired us, you see. Uh, I was involved in protesting Grosvenor Square, and that was outside the, the US Embassy, and, uh, and uh, other protests. Uh, and uh, when I was a student in London as, as well, uh, in the early 70s, there was the IRA, the Irish protests and once I found myself right at the very front line I, I don't know I, I had this friend who was determined to push to forward the front we found ourselves right in this front line those rocks were flying one way and and then there were rubber bullets and it was it was terrible I didn't know how I survived without getting hurt actually in that, on that occasion we continued to talk to Rick for some time and he told us that many people who live in Teepee Valley live there due to political reasons that many residents were environmental activists who ended up in trouble with the police. So naturally, we asked him if he'd ever had any altercations with the police. I've been busted for cannabis, yeah, I caught, that's quite serious. I spent six months inside prison for what was one joint, which wasn't even my joint. I was with a group of people who got passed round. I did six months for that. That's how it was in those days, and... Uh, and so that just reinforced the hypocrisy and the unrealness of society. And I, I, remem I remember when I was being carted down from Wormwood Scrubs in one of those prison buses, and we were being driven down, and we were driven through all these bland, horrible s estates of, of houses. And I, re I remember uh, it was almost like a, a spiritual experience. I was handcuffed and, and uh, all I could see was through these bars and I looked out and I thought, oh, that, how horrible it all was. How much I disbelieved in the, in the whole uh, civilization that could, could produce living like, like this. I, I, I thought to myself, those people are all prisoners in that society 
and and yet most of them they they've got no idea they're prisoners. I know I'm a prisoner. I'm a prisoner for the next six months, and I'm never going to live in in one of those houses again. And I've never lived in a house again since then. And so that is the interesting route that how I came to TP Valley. It it, it was through a, a conflict with the authorities as as well as my disbelief in the environment that our civilization is producing for us. If you respect the planet, the Earth, it's going to lead you to, to be following a certain kind of lifestyle or it's going, it's going to lead you to reform your lifestyle to being more gentle on the Earth, which is what we all do here. Living in a teepee in Wales is a very bizarre, eccentric thing to be doing, which it has to be. In this climate, you know, it rains, 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 living in a canvas tent in the rain for 35 years. It's got to be a bit eccentric, really, but I don't care.